Mistakes to avoid so you don't get your Facebook ad account banned. No, I don't waste no time. Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video and yes i have gotten my account banned yet again this is like the fifth or the sixth time that it has happened and the very first time i actually got everything banned um so for those of you that don't understand like the structure you've got your personal profile you've got your business manager and you've got your ad account um the hierarchy of bands which i've already mentioned in a few other videos um usually the first thing that happens is that your ad gets rejected, it will get disapproved. Um, and then, you know, if you continue to push through that same type of ad, um, they will basically shut down the ad account. Usually prior to that, um, they'll do little, they'll give you little warnings, basically. They will unpublish your page that you're using to advertise. They will ask you to verify your profile. You know, you need to upload your ID, etc. Stuff like that. Usually things like that are like little warning signs that yes, Facebook have you on their radar. But like I said, um, if you get your ads disapproved or rejected over time, they'll say, okay, you know what, we're just going to uh, basically, you know, ban this ad account. So the ad account below your business manager is uh, basically, you know, banned and you cannot use that ad account anymore. What you can do within the one business manager is create up to five ad accounts. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. It is a bit annoying. And um, basically, you know, your ecosystem is a bit tainted because one of the five lives that you've got um, is basically taken away from you. And then usually if you get up to three ad accounts banned, Facebook basically say, okay, listen, you need a timeout. We are gonna take down that business manager as well leaving you with basically nothing to actually use to advertise for either yourself or for your clients. Then if you continue to pursue, uh, you know, media buying, etc., uh, which is against Facebook's advertising policies, they will go hard on you and basically take down your personal profile as well and restrict your personal profile from advertising on Facebook ever again. Usually, when you get a ad disapproved and you can review it, you know, you can basically uh, request a manual review, you might get you might get the, the ad approved again. Same goes for the ad account. You know, if you get your ad account banned, it's not the end of the world. There's a, let's say 70, 30 chance that you will get it back. Uh, so 70% chance that you get it back, 30% chance that it's gone forever. Um, with the business manager, I'll say 50, 50. Personal profile, it's, uh, it's the end of the line. And um, to be fair, because of the coronavirus stuff, etc., um, and of course the elections, uh, that's why it's 50-50 with the business manager because they are testing out a lot of stuff. Prior to this, um, business manager was just a permanent thing. You know, it was, it was, if it was banned, it was gone forever. Now, because Facebook acknowledged the fact that yes, they are testing out a lot of stuff. You know, with the elections, the new crawlers, etc. Um, they will basically, you know, give you the the benefits of the doubt, and they might give you the business manager back. But like I said, prior to this, uh, also the business manager, as soon as that was gone, it was a no-go. But with that said, you know, how uh, or, you know, what situation am I currently in? Um, I have gotten my personal profile permanently restricted, so I can't use my personal profile to um, advertise. So, uh, you know, of course, um, a few of you have messaged me because obviously I show a lot of videos saying that I'm running paid traffic for, you know, my um, my own digital products as well as my clients, etc. And then, you know, some of you have asked me, well, I've looked at your Facebook ad library, you're not running anything at all, you know, you know, don't lie. And the reason for that is because I'm using different profiles, etc., to run ads. Um, so the Joshua Daniel personal brand Facebook page is banned as well. The Brampaneer Facebook page is banned as well. So we've used different accounts um, to run ads, you know, for our agency, etc. But with that said, um, what I do now is we have the business manager verified. So what you can do if you go to business manager business settings, um, you can request a verification and then you can verify the business manager, which I highly recommend you guys do because if it's verified, there's a lesser likelihood that they'll take down the BM. And if there is ever a situation where you need to upload documents, etc., because the BM is verified, it, it all goes a bit more smoother and a bit more quickly. Um, so our BM is verified. And then what I basically do is um, we've got a plug that farms personal profiles and then um, I basically just buy a personal profile, connect myself to the existing BM again and that way I've got access to all of the assets. The personal profile will last anyway from one to three months and then Facebook will shut it down, I'll buy a new one and so on and so forth. It's not the most ideal situation, it is a worst case scenario 
But for me, for now, this is all I can do. Um, we're working on the back end, you know, behind the scenes on trying to get my profile back. We do have contacts within Facebook, not directly. Um, basically, if you are spending more than 100K a month, you get a Facebook rep, uh, someone that basically helps you with the ad accounts because obviously it is in Facebook's best interest that if you are spending that much that you continue to do so. So via via, we are in contact with Facebook to see what we can do. Or maybe if uh, they can just let me create a new account and start afresh, then you know even that is fine with me. But on to the main topic of the video, the four things that you need to do uh, to basically prevent your ad account, et cetera, from being banned. Now this is not 100% accurate. You know There are still times where even if you do all of this, you will get things taken down, you will th get things disapproved. It's because you know Facebook's algorithm is constantly changing, Facebook crawlers are getting smarter, but also when they are testing out new things, you might get things banned and disabled without it actually being against advertising policies. All you need to do in situations like that is just request a review and see if you can get it back. But the very first thing I noticed, especially when getting things disapproved, when you're already on thin ice, so as I mentioned, when you're already getting your page uh, unpublished, um, when you're already getting ads rejected, etc., make sure you do not publish multiple things at once. So what I mean by that is uh, you set up a campaign, then you realize that the URL has got, um, you know, it's got something behind the string that you wanna remove, then don't remove the string, publish again, change the image, publish again. Make sure that you save a lot of things in draft and then publish it all in one go. Because if you're publishing a lot of things within a certain time frame, I do not know what the time frame is, um, Facebook will see that as an unusual activity. Bear in mind that people that are advertising on Facebook, yes, we've got these big tech companies, yes, we've got big media buyers that are spending hundreds of thousands a day in a month, but not everyone is like that. The majority of the people, I would say 80% of the people that are advertising on Facebook are doing so with one campaign, one ad set, one ad on $5 a day, okay? And I'm speaking for the local businesses, etc., out there, because even though it looks like everyone is advertising on Facebook and spending thousands and thousands, that is only a small majority of the people that are doing so because there are literally millions of people advertising on Facebook every single day. And like I said, the majority are spending very little and only setting up very small campaigns. So if you're coming in, you're setting up a campaign, you're duplicating 10 ad sets and you're changing every single ad set, um, you're publishing every single time, then Facebook will think, hang on, what, what's going on with this guy? You know, this guy is publishing all kinds of ads. He's making all kinds of weird changes. Let's just disapprove it or reject it. And then, you know, if you request a manual review, we'll have a proper look at it. So what you need to do is save into draft. And then only when you're completely done with the entire campaign, click on publish. And then on the right bottom of your screen, it will say like publish a one of let's say 36 or something like that. And then it will publish it all in one go. And then in Facebook's eyes, you're just setting up one big campaign. Okay. And then the two little side notes that I do want to add to that is when the advertisement is in the learning phase. So when you're optimizing for conversion, let's say you are optimizing for uh, purchase. So you've got a conversion campaign optimizing for purchase, then it will enter the learning phase, which means that you, Facebook is basically trying to get 50 events within a seven day time frame, so that you can uh, exit the learning phase and knows exactly what type of person is most likely to purchase your product or service. Within that learning phase, try not to make any changes to it because yes, it will renew the learning phase and Facebook again will see that as something unusual because Facebook has basically told you, okay, we are learning about this campaign, leave us alone, give us seven days and we'll get back to you. And then if you're making changes, Facebook needs to constantly renew that seven day learning phase. And again, Facebook will get annoyed. Um, I, I, I say that as if Facebook's like a human being, it is an AI, it is a robot that's doing all this, but stuff like this, you know, does basically come to the service and Facebook does think that that is unusual. And again, will reject the campaign. And the same goes for the budget. So if you have a campaign that you are trying to scale and you scale with more than 20%, again, the campaign will go either back into the learning phase or it will go back on the review. So if you've got a campaign that you're running on $5 a day or $50 a day and you double that, so to $10 or $100 a day, then it will go back into review or it'll basically renew that learning phase. What you're best doing is staying below the 20% budget increase. So if you're on, um, let's say 100 a day, up, up that to 120 a day and just keep it like that for 24 hours and then up it again. And yes, you know, this is a bit tedious, especially when you're trying to scale, but this way you will stay under the radar with Facebook and you won't get anything disapproved or rejected. At least, you know, you are decreasing the likelihood that that actually happens. Okay, and then moving on to the second sort of tip of the day. And yes, this might seem very, very logical, 
but uh, I highly recommend you guys just basically you know look through it and check it out because more often than not we don't actually realize that we are doing this but basically using controversial content now especially with you know everything that is going on in the world with the pandemic the coronavirus etc a lot of things are now getting rejected for being controversial one of our clients has a headband um, that has nothing to do with coronavirus and face masks etc uh, but even the headband got rejected for basically you know uh, going against facebook's advertising policies and when we looked into it and we basically you know asked facebook you know why is this getting rejected they basically said because it resembles a face mask and that, like obviously i can't actually show you the image that we used um but you know it looked nothing like a face mask and i couldn't even you know there was absolutely no way that anyone would mistake it for a face mask but okay you know facebook sees that differently and that is why it got disapproved so anything that has anything to do with the coronavirus whether that is face masks whether that is any kind of um like antiseptic cream or antiseptic uh, hand gel anything like that will be will, will basically get disapproved and will basically go against facebook's advertising policies so how do we go against this or how do we prevent this from happening basically do not mention the coronavirus do not try and exploit the coronavirus situation do not mention the coronavirus in any way shape or form and make sure that you inform yourself on what kind of products are now prohibited and i read an article the other day if i can find you know the the source of the article i will link it in the description box down below if not my apologies i just stumbled onto it um it was basically a ppe company so someone or a business that uh, provides protective uh, equipment. Um, you know what did they have? Like face masks, welding gear, uh, antiseptic, um, you know, hand gel. They also had like earbuds, you know, to protect your ears when you know there are like loud construction sites going on, etc. And every single campaign that they ran got disapproved. They contacted Facebook. They had a Facebook rep. They contacted him as well. And Facebook just said, "Listen, we need to draw a line. We cannot." promote anything to do with face masks because it does resemble um, face masks that are used for the coronavirus and we just need to draw a line and we cannot make any exceptions so an entire business basically got shut down overnight because facebook changed its policies i basically didn't want anything to resemble uh, you know anything that can be promoted for the pandemic and they had absolutely no chance you know that they could not do anything about it so that is how strict Facebook are getting with this and that is why I highly recommend you to stay away from anything that has anything to do with uh, you know the situation and just make sure that you check out Facebook's advertising policies to see which products are actually prohibited and which products are seen as controversial products now by Facebook. Then thirdly is a point that um, has basically you know, been, been here for a while, it's quite a common known fact but you cannot mention anything that has uh, or can be considered as a misleading claim. So anything to do with diets, uh, weight loss, um, get rich quickly, earn money fast, um, you know, gain muscle fast, uh, lose, you know, anything like that, anything that could be seen as misleading is no longer allowed. This has been so for the last few years now. Uh, for example, if you have a fitness client or any client that is in the health and fitness niche, you are not allowed to use before and after photos. So if you've got a product um, that basically helps females with weight loss by doing certain exercises, you cannot have what she looked like beforehand and what she looked like after it. It's no longer allowed by Facebook. What you can do, what some clients have gotten away with, is videos where you basically show the before first and then later in the video you show the after. Because you're not directly comparing the two, apologies I did, uh, just knock my uh, my stand basically for the camera but if you do not directly compare the two facebook might not see it and you will get away with it and then lastly because you know this is getting to be quite a long video it's called the bait and switch and it's something that a lot of affiliate marketers especially black hat affiliate marketers used back in the day and basically if you get a url disapproved so let's say um, the advertisement is okay, but the URL contains something that is against Facebook advertising policies, which is, yes, you know, this is something that Facebook does check. The way the Facebook crawler works, it will look at the advertisements. So it will look like, uh, it will look at your creative, your copy, and then the crawler will also go to the destination URL. So the URL that you are using to send traffic to, because Facebook still considers that, um, you know, part of the campaign. And, you know, in Facebook's eyes, you are driving traffic uh, from Facebook onto a website that goes against Facebook's advertising policies. 
Facebook will, you know, basically sees that as a negative experience for the users on Facebook, so it will take it down. And uh, what a lot of black hat affiliate marketers used to do is basically just uh, create a campaign and send the destination or have the destination URL as Google or some kind of white hat URL. Then what they used to do is as soon as the advertisement got approved, they would basically redirect that URL to the campaign or the, you know, basically the landing page that they actually wanted to do. So for example, because I understand uh, or listen to myself speak now, I can understand why that might sound confusing. Let's say they send um, traffic to www.cleancampaign.com, yeah? So they send the traffic to cleancampaign.com and on that clean campaign website, um, there's nothing that goes against Facebook advertising policies. It's all clean, you know, there's just a simple product that um, is being promoted. Facebook's crawlers go over that, so within the 48 hour period of your campaign getting approved or even in the approval process, the campaign will basically get reviewed and if Facebook thinks it's fine, it will approve the campaign and it'll basically start performing. Then, once it's approved and once the crawlers have gotten over it, um, the Black Hat marketer will then change that URL to uh, still go to cleancampaign.com, but then when they click on cleancampaign.com, they show the actual offer that they want to promote. Or what I said, what they used to do is just use Google as the URL, and then as soon as the campaign got approved, um, just change the URL to you know whatever it is that they want, and then hope that doesn't go back into review. This is called the bait and switch, and is not allowed anymore. Obviously, it was a shady way of getting through Facebook's crawlers, but Facebook have you know gotten onto this fact, and as soon as you do anything like this, Facebook will immediately uh, ban your business manager and ad accounts. So do not do this because it's a very easy way of getting everything disapproved. And uh, we actually had one of our clients that wanted to show different offers in different countries. So the landing page stayed the same, but based on your geolocation, so let's say you viewed that website in England, you would see different products and different offers than when you viewed that in France. And Facebook also saw this as a redirect. So because you are, let's say in the Netherlands, the, camp, the URL will change to, again, let, let's say for example, it was cleancampaign.com forward slash UK and you're in the Netherlands, it will change to forward slash NL. And Facebook saw that as a redirect and also basically took down the entire business manager. So Facebook are very strict with this, so make sure you, you know, basically prevent yourself from doing this and make sure that you check what is going on with the destination URL before you uh, basically upload that or paste that to Facebook. But anyway, that is all I've got for today. Hope these little tips help. If you wanna know more about this, how to make sure that your campaigns don't get disapproved or rejected or anything like that, then please leave a comment down below. You know, I don't mind doing videos on this because unfortunately I do have experience with this. Um, you know, I've learned the hard way with a lot of these things. But like I said, if you wanna know more about this, leave a comment down below. But for now, I'm going to wrap up this video here. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Yeah.